I am super excited. We're about to kick down the doors, go inside of the lab or the C-suite of Dr. Sundeze, who is the first to have a PhD and experimental, some really, really serious scientific stuff. We're gonna hear more about what she's about and why it is she's been so pioneering and why she's such a major inspiration for South Africa and the entire continent. Well, it's been a long journey from Newcastle to now. And what a wonderful time to be having this conversation with stu the student revolution movement happening. You're a wonderful example that anything can happen. Uh, anything is possible, especially when it comes to education. Mm -hmm. when, did you really, when did you fall in love with the sciences? My first love with the sciences was when I was 12 years old. I think it started with a dream. I wanted to make a difference in our community. When I was 12, there was this scourge of HIV and AIDS. People were dying, people were infected, others were affected by HIV and AIDS. And my, my thinking was I need to make a difference in our country, I need to make a difference in the world. So for me to be able to make a difference, I need to study sciences so that I could find cure for AIDS. That was the first thing that was in my mind. So I was driven to, to do sciences against all odds. You basically, you're lecturing you uh, first years. Yes, yes, I've spent, um, spent most of my time with the first years in the lecture rooms and sometimes in the tutoring room, sometimes in the lab. So my life is mostly around uh, the first years. It's a field in the condensed matter physics. Specifically the one that I graduated in, it's experimental physics. Experimental the physics. Physics of highly correlated matter. Of highly correlated <laughs> matter. matter. So yes. matter that has some sort of connection. Yes. So yes. give us a quick example. I was working on cerium compounds. I hope you will you'll still understand or our, our viewers will, will understand. So in a periodic table, there are those elements that are at the bottom of, yes. of the periodic table. So I was uh, working with most of those. So specifically the cerium was the key element okay. and then I could put it, I could add it to copper, I could add to, to, to oh, silicon to I form see. the compound. So what, what we were studying in the, in, in, the, in the whole project is the correlation between the electrons and the moments of the electrons, the spins and all of that. What, what really happens as you put all of those things together, how do they behave under extreme conditions? In your field, yes. there are not many peers, you don't have many peers you can call you're the first to get a PhD in this specific field in Africa or just South Africa? In Africa. How were you able to build relationships amongst your peers um, as a person who's coming in from the outside being the first? The first person who I contacted was Professor Stradom, who was a study leader and, uh, under which I graduated in. So he's the key person in this whole project. So I would say he's one of the, the, the experts in the field that we have in the country. Oh, really? Then if I hit the, 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 the brick wall, I just call him. But most of these, um, most of people in this field are overseas. You've got overseas collaborators. Okay. And you're not limited to you. You can even send them an email. They could speak to you. You could write papers and then they could even converse, you, 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 you do speak in this kind of uh, a community. In, in my field now, I'm trying to, to look into another dimension of this study. I was working with the ferromagnetic compounds, now I'm trying to move into superconducting materials to try and broaden my, my scope. Oh, because okay. I specialize in, in, in ferromagnets, but now I don't want to be limited into that, into that field alone, now I'm trying to to enlarge and then look into, into superconductivity. And I'm trying to get some students that I could uh, supervise, people that we could work with, into trying to, to look into research of, of superconductivity. Um, that moment when a student sees the potential mm -hmm. of what you're doing and the magnitude, it must be really exciting. It is exciting, it is exciting, but you, but you as a person, you're in this point that I don't think that I'm there yet, I don't think that I'm there yet. And I think that that's the feeling that gives you, you can do better, you can do ah, more, you yeah. can do more. Yeah, you have to keep pushing. For someone who wants to start and they're 16, 16, 17 years old, yeah. where can they start looking for funding? In most of the universities, that's what we, we now know as NSFAS. So that's a loan that comes from the government. But unfortunately, not everyone gets that loan because they need a number of paperwork, they need you to prove this, this and that. And you find that students struggle to get their fees covered. As a country, we need to pray to, to pay more attention to the undergrad. Try and come up with a plan. What do we do with our undergrad? If, even if we, we can say, 
90% of their fees should be free. I would be happy to, to see that. Wow. Because some of them even go hungry. They say, I don't even have food. What do I do? And they still come to and study. They still come to study. They are expected to concentrate from the morning till the afternoon. And while they are doing that, and they are still expected to write an exam in their, in their empty stomach, and that becomes a, a, a huge problem. Wow, that was Dr. Sandezi. What an amazing woman from Newcastle to Johannesburg at UJ. She is making a fundamental shift in society when it comes to how we see the power of scientists. Incredible.